Hello all and welcome to the Rails Board meeting. I am Alex Vancina, President of the Rails Board, and I call this meeting to order uh, on Friday, June 16th at 1.05 p.m. Emily, would you please call roll? Sure. Monica Caldicott. Here. Rosie Camargo. Here. Alice Creason. Here. Robin Heidenthal. Here. Diane Hollister. Here. Renee Leva. Here. Jennifer McIntosh. Here. Julie Melovec. Here. Becky Spratford. Thomas Stagg. Here. Beth Teppen. Here. Alice Vancina. Here. Vanessa Villarreal. Here. And Karen Voidick. And we have a quorum. Thank you, Emily. Uh, next, we have recognition of guests and announcements. Let's start here in Burridge. Monica Harris, Rails. Emily Feister, Rails. Sharon Swanson, Rails. Laura Nemeth, Rails. Jonathan Rails. Barb Miller, Rails. Uh, Jennifer Hovane, Philip Park Public Library. Joe Philip Park, Rails. Mark Hatch, Rails. Mary Witt, Rails. Dan Bosman, Rails. Okay, thank you. Any guests in Coal Valley? No, there are no guests. Thank you. Emily, would you please read the names of any guests on Zoom? Yes, we have Megan, put your name, Megan Harmon from the Illinois State Library. Welcome, Megan. And we have Brian Hebel and Layla Heath. And Dan is also on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If Emily has not read your name, please announce yourself and put your name in the chat. Hearing none, we'll move on to public comments and announcements. Are there any public comments in Burr Ridge? If not, Cole Valley? No public comment. Any public comments at the State Library? No, thank you. No. Thank you. Any public comments from Zoom participants? Emily, did we receive any public comments by email? We did not. Thank you. A Zoom chat will be disabled after the public comments section. Are there any other announcements at this time? If not, next we have the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to move any item to the regular agenda for further discussion? May I have a motion and a second for adoption of the consent agenda? So moved, Julie. No, that second, Robin. Julie, thank you. And Robin? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Next, we have Sharon Swanson with the Rails Financial Report. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will make this short, although I do have a, I do have a couple of um, unusual um, events to report this month. Um, the May 31st general fund cash and investment balance of 23.3 million would fund approximately 22.4 months of budgeted operations. And as I mentioned this last month, the coverage increased slightly due to the May 3rd receipt of our final APC grant payment, which was the federal portion of our APC grant, pay, grant um, in the amount of just over $1.9 million. Um, general fund revenues through May of over $15.7 million were approximately $1.6 million above budget. Um, and this is due to APC grant revenues received um, to date, as well as the receipt of the unbudgeted L2 maintenance and development pro project um, grant, as well as the world language um, catalog and grant project revenues. Um, and these totaled nearly um, $111,000. And this uh, over budget revenue was also due to um, investment income being nearly $714,000 above budget. Um, and this includes um, changes in the market value of our investments. Um, and as a side note, the Federal Reserve this week issued a press release um, from their meeting that predicted a 70% chance of two additional rate increases um, before the end of this calendar year. The first one likely being at their July meeting. Um, so they are now projecting a 5.6% um, interest rate, ending interest rate at the end of this calendar year, dropping down to 4.6% in 2024 and 3.4% in 2025. Um, and the, these over budget revenues are partially offset by lower reimbursement revenues of nearly um, $95,000 from group purchases that have yet to be spun on new member requested products. General fund expenditures through May of over $12.7 million were nearly $753,000 below budget. 
This was due to lower contractual services expenditures um, from a less than budgeted increase in our negotiated contract with our delivery outsourcing vendor, um, as well as not having yet incurred expenses for the Verso Consortia product and uh, not having yet awarded any fine more Illinois joining incentives of which we're not expecting to before the end of the fiscal year. Um, this is this. Um, Underage in um, expenditures is also due to personal, personnel um, delays in filling um, vacant positions. Um, and these are partially offset by increased recruiting and temporary help costs due to um, delivery staff vacancies and leave time, as well as above budget executive director search cost. Um, vehicle expenditures service were also um, under budget as a whole due to fuel prices. Um, falling well below the budget of $4.25 per gallon um, for the majority of the year. Uh, but this is partially offset by, of course, increased vehicle repairs due to the aging of our fleet. And onto the first bit of bad news, during the last portion of May, the Rockford location experienced a catalytic converter theft. Uh, this is in addition to the thefts that we've experienced at our Bolingbrook and East Peoria um, facilities. Um, an insurance claim has been filed, and um, we have paid for the replacement parts, the repairs um, in June, with the expectation that we will receive re the reimbursement check from our insurance carrier early in the next fiscal year. Um, travel is currently um, under budget as well and is expected to remain well below the budgeted amount. Library materials um, were also below budget um, due to timing differences and payments to how things are budgeted, as well as group purchases, group purchases expenditures for member selected subscriptions that we don't expect to incur for the end of the fiscal year. And on to my second bit of bad news. Um, I did also want to mention that we did have a small group of checks, um, five checks that were intercepted in the mail. Um, and one of them was, a, was attempted to be cashed through our checking account. Um, luckily, we do have payee positive pay. Um, the payee name was washed off, uh, but payee positive pay did catch it. We were able to decline payment. We didn't lose any money. And they did not bother to put through the other four checks because that was essentially a test check. They were low dollar amounts. Um, but um, we are, as an extra added security measure, getting um, the specialized micro um, magnetic ink to print our checks with so that if they attempt to wash them, they will more than likely still be machine readable. So it's not infallible, but it is an extra security measure. And I have filed a report with the um, Postal Inspector's Office about this incident. Wow. Are there any questions? All right. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. <laughs> we'll move on to reports, uh, starting with uh, uh, my report. I'd like to uh, acknowledge that we have three outgoing board members, uh, Becky Spratford, who could not attend this meeting, uh, Beth Teppen, who was with Paul Valley, and Jennifer McIntosh is here. Uh, Jennifer, uh, if you please come forward, we have a plaque for you. <clears throat> The plaque reads in sincere appreciation of your service to the rails board. Thank you so much. Quick, can I give a quick picture? Of your Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> board members are so important to the success and growth mm -hmm. of rails, and we really appreciate all your service and and Beth and, and Becky as well. Uh, you'll be missed. Thank you for your service. Thank you. This has been an amazing experience meeting all of you and just having different conversations that I really, frankly, never expected to have the opportunity to have. So I just this is a really unique place to work and and engage professionally, and I can't say enough about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Beth, would you like to say anything? I just would like to thank you guys for this opportunity. It's been a good learning experience, and I hope I've contributed to your uh, efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have committee reports. Those were emailed to the board on Tuesday. Does anyone have any additions uh, or questions about the reports? 
If not, next we have Monica with the Rails Monthly Report. Thank you, Alex, and hello, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, we have had an exciting week, and so before we get into some of the content that was in the actual report, I wanted to acknowledge uh, a couple of things. Um, one, uh, with us today is Mary Witt, uh, who is our Director of Marketing and Communications. Uh, Mary has been with Rails since the beginning um, and has been working with the systems for the last 36 years. Uh, Mary has been an invaluable contributor to Rails and especially in setting our house style and understanding of how people understand and engage with Rails. Uh, she has built a terrific team who does wonderful work for us um, and has left us in a really great place. Uh, and so we want to thank Mary for her many contributions that she has into retirement in July. Uh, this will be Mary's last board meeting. Um, so we wanted to acknowledge her service today. So thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. Uh, we also had an exciting week here because on Monday, May 12th, um, myself, Dan Bostrom, and Becky Spratford, um, who is, a, of course, our board trustee, had the opportunity to attend um, the House Bill 2789 signing. Um, that was Governor Pritzker signing the bill that is meant uh, to discourage book banning um, by encouraging libraries to have to have some level of policy um, around consideration policies or to adopt the ALA uh, Bill of Rights. Um, Governor Pritzker did sign that at the Harold Washington Library at Chicago Public Library and several uh, people were in attendance, including Secretary Giannullius um, and Governor Pritzker himself to sign, as well as uh, Lieutenant Governor Stratton um, and ALA Executive uh, Director Tracy Hall. Uh, it was a great day, and there were a lot of really powerful speeches. Um, it was wonderful to get that support from the Secretary, and we want to extend our thanks both to Governor Pritzker and to Secretary Giannullius for their support of libraries in this moment. Um, we were also delighted to see how much uh, coverage that this particular issue has had and as it has been reported by Secretary Giannullius uh, in several interviews that he gave that other states have been reaching out um, since Illinois is the first state to do this kind of legislation to try and see uh, if there's anything that they can do that might be similar. So I wanna congratulate them on those efforts and, and again, thank them for the opportunity to be there on that momentous day. It was really a wonderful experience. Um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you that are happening here at Rails. Um, as you probably saw in the report, we finished up our very last meet and greet event. So in the first hundred days that I have been here at Rails as the executive director, we had scheduled seven meet and greets throughout the Rails service area. And I really appreciate the opportunity to meet with so many of our members in person and talk to them about their challenges, what they're proud of. Um, it was a really great opportunity to get to see people in person and be in their libraries and have a chance to hear directly from them about how Rails can serve them and what that can happen. Um, I want to thank our real staff for coordinating those visits, which uh, there was a lot of them and there, there was a lot of work that went into that. Um, and also for continuing to put some of those pieces together. Um, in addition to the meet and greets, we had also uh, done visits with each of our delivery locations and did our last meeting with our Rockford group yesterday. Uh, and I want to thank Mark Hatch for being along with me at all of those events and having the chance to speak directly with our teams about what they would like to see and what's important to them them about working at Rails and the best way to communicate with our folks across our service area. Um, so a great opportunity, and I'm really glad that I had the, the chance to do that um, in these first few months here at Rails. Um, in addition, I want to share with you a uh, really big celebration, uh, which is that, as many of you probably saw, our, the statewide access to electronic, electronic resources program has been funded. Um, that was put into Secretary Giannullius's budget and was approved as part of the budgeting process. This will save Illinois libraries upwards of $95 million um, and finally puts us uh, with the rest of the country and having a statewide database package that will be available, not just for the use of all of our libraries um, that currently have them, but for our libraries who can't afford these resources at all. And for the 1 million unserved who have no access to libraries will have access to these resources. So this is expected to happen in fiscal year 2024. Um, I spoke with Greg McCormick about next steps, and he did say he would be reaching out to the systems in early July and that we will start to talk about a process um, beginning at the ISLAC meeting in July. So lots more to say on that, but we wanted to take a moment to celebrate that. 
that as this has been something that this board has worked on directly, that so many of our committees have worked on, that our uh, staff has worked on so exhaustively, and that our members have provided so much feedback on. So congratulations to all. And of course, thank you to Secretary Giannullius for believing in this process and moving it forward. Can we just celebrate that? Um, in addition, I uh, wanted to share as a result of some of the meet and greets, we got some great suggestions from our members. One of them was that we had heard from folks who were in the midst of planning uh, their decennial efficiency reports for our libraries that have to do that. Um, and they asked if there was any way that Rails could provide uh, some sample language about all the ways that Rails saves the money through the efficiencies that Rails provides. Um, so our staff have been at work uh, at talking points for all the different ways that Rails uh, saves them money and, and includes the opportunity for resource sharing. And so we should have those ready to share with our library directors next week. Uh, it'll be posted also on our website, along with all our other decennial efficiency FAQs and sample reports that we've been working on. But I want to thank the staff um, for putting those together relatively quickly and thank the members for suggesting it. Um, also wanted to give you just an update on the associate executive director uh, piece. We are uh, well underway in that process and have narrowed down our process to two finalists. Um, we will uh, have those finalist interviews in early July, just because of schedules with ALA and some of the other things that we have in place. And then we should be able to make an offer in early July. So we'll let you know as soon as we know, um, but I wanted to let you know about that because I know you have had questions and been interested. Um, in addition, in your report, you probably saw a few things. One, ALA is coming up. Um, we will have a booth at ALA. It's booth number 3414, which is in your packet, if you don't remember. Uh, we wanted to encourage you, if you're going to be at ALA, come and visit us. Um, and in fact, if you'd like to spend a little time at the booth greeting members, we'd love to have you. Uh, in particular, on Sunday <laughs> would be a, a day we'd especially love to have you come by. Uh, if you'd like to volunteer your time at the booth, um, you can get in contact with Nicole Zimmer and she can let you know the times that, that we most need folks um, if you have the availability and you're willing to come. Um, in addition, we wanted to share some exciting things that are happening with our Explore More program. Um, as you may have seen, Chicago Public Library joined Explore More on June 5th. Uh, that has been the result of a lot of conversation and talking and our own Jessica Barnes co-led training for the CPL staff in May. Uh, approximately 160 people attended the May 18th training and 140 people from CPL attended the May 19th training. Um, in addition to that, as many of you know, we have had the opportunity to add uh, discounts and attractions for many Chicago area uh, museums that have long been of interest to the Rails members as being part of the Explore More project, including Chicago Children's Museum, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, um, and then recently added uh, was the DuSable Black History Museum and Lincoln Park Zoo uh, with discounts. So just wanted to share that with you all. If you haven't looked at Explore More in a while, it's a great time to look at it because there's lots of updates and changes. Um, and I want to thank Jessica for all the work that she's done there. So that is my report. Are there any questions about anything that we shared today? I'm interested just to see how you're gonna to top this for next fiscal year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a good well, fiscal year. Still, <laughs> next year, I, that's a little fun part. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank great. you all. Lots of great news this month. Yes. Thank you, Monica. Next. Uh, we have Barb Miller with an update on Find More Illinois. Monica, do you want me to move there or just use my best teacher? Why don't you come here? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Okay. You, need me. you want to sit, you can't. Oh, so thank you can you. have your computer. No problem. Okay. Hello, I'm Barb Miller. I'm the Consortial Services Supervisor here at Rails. I've been here about a week shy of eight months. So I am largely responsible for Find More Illinois, which is what I'm going to talk a bit about today. So Find More Illinois is an interlibrary loan platform that provides access to all participating libraries holdings in one seamless interface. Anyone can search the holdings, both patrons and staff from participating libraries can locate and request materials from all participating libraries across Illinois to be delivered directly to their home library via Rails delivery service. Libraries of all types and sizes can join, no matter what kind of catalog software they use, and participating libraries can be members of a shared catalog or be a standalone. Each library can de determine which materials they're willing to share, and only those materials are entered in the Rails 
find more catalog. A uh, great option for Rails libraries that have decided not to join a shared catalog, but are still committed to resource sharing. And it also has the potential to connect catalogs of our six shared cons catalog consortia, three of which already have participating members. That would be RSA, Prairie Cat, and RRLC. And all six Pinnacle libraries are also members of Find More Illinois. Libraries that participate in Find More Illinois not only have access to materials from multiple types of libraries across the state, but they also have access to MARC records from these same libraries. For libraries that choose not to join OCLC or cannot afford to, these records can reduce the amount of time spent on original cataloging. A great deal of research and preparatory work launched the program we know is Find More Illinois. Originally, it was called the Overlay Project, and that started in 2013, leading to a pilot of 21 libraries that began in 2018. Initial growth was slow due to the pandemic, but as of May 30th, 2023, Find More Illinois has 60 participating libraries. There are 50 public libraries, one academic library, eight school libraries, and one special library. There are three libraries that are in the process of onboarding into Find More Illinois right now, and nine more libraries have expressed interest in the project. We've been working in partnership with the staff from Carly to promote membership to academic libraries in iShare and expect to have additional participation from more academic libraries as a result. Libraries that participate in Find More Illinois also have the option of participating in a pilot program called Enhanced Borrowing. <clears throat> this program sends unfilled borrow requests within Find More Illinois to Eric Bain here at Rails to be filled via OCLC. The items are shipped to Burr Ridge and then they are sent to the requesting library via Rails delivery service. And the program assists standalone libraries who may not have access to OCLC. And we've also find there are libraries that are exploring other options to OCLC. Right now, membership fees for Find More Illinois participation are based on collection expenditures. And there are no one-time setup fees through December 31st, 2023, which makes the remainder of this calendar year a great time to join Find More Illinois. I have three libraries that I think really show some of the best of Find More, and I have some quotes from members that I'd like to share with you. Uh, one example of something I thought was really unique and generous is Parlin Ingersoll Public Library asked us to set their criteria in the catalog so that their patrons could not borrow from school library members. And we asked why, because we would never had that request before. And it was because they recognize that schools have limited resources as compared to public libraries. And they don't want to draw down on that, but they're more than happy to share their resources with the school libraries. Old Town School of Folk Music, before they even approached us about joining, did extensive research to find out how they could take their very large collection of CDs and LPs and have them delivered safely to all FMI members. And Anawan Public Schools. Anawan is a community of 876 people. They have a one school that is K-12 in one building that is 334 students. They had about 6,700 items in their school catalog. After joining Find More Illinois, they now have access to 2.1 million items. So some of the quotes I wanted to share. Find More Illinois is a great way to access the Illinois resources and be able to help each other out and be able to bring what we have to other libraries that maybe don't have those kinds of resources. As such a small library, I have patrons that have read everything I have that they want to read. With Find More Illinois, they can get any book they want. Find More Illinois gives us the benefits and resource sharing that other consortia can get without giving up our local control. Find More Illinois offers a fully integrated system by which patrons may initiate their own holds outside of our consortium, adding value to their experience using our community services. Find More Illinois had a very, they had a very positive experience borrowing and returning materials through the program. So moving forward, while libraries don't technically need to have their own catalog and software to be able to participate in Find More Illinois, it works best if they have a circulation system that includes cataloging records and patron records. For libraries that don't already have and cannot afford their own software or a consortium membership, we've started the process of exploring 
and planning for a limited service consortial implementation of catalog software. It's intended to enable these non-automated libraries to fully participate and find more Illinois. And this is an extensive process that will continue throughout fiscal year 2024. We've also begun to explore adding non-returnables to find more Illinois. We know it's something that school libraries and academic libraries are very interested in. As we learn more about the upcoming statewide database package, as Monica just referred to, we will continue to assess the feasibility and components of that implementation. So the Find More Illinois, Illinois team is me <laughs> and also Eric Bain, who's our technology special projects coordinator and Ann Slaughter, who many of you know, who is our director of technical services. And the three of us all have some overlapping and some not. Eric, I had referred to before because he handles a lot of the day-to-day -day and IT support for our members. And he's also the guy that is handling our enhanced borrowing. Can I answer any questions or if anybody wants to share a comment? We use it at Highwood all the time and our patrons really like it. It makes it a lot easier for us because we're such a smaller library and it just makes it really easy for us to be able to get them what they need. That's great to hear. Yeah, so we definitely use it. And Barbara, my school, high school library is also a member of Find More Illinois, partly mostly because of my participation on this board. I'm not sure that I would have clued into it in the same way if I if I hadn't heard so much about um, what a great service it is here. And it's very helpful. Our um, young adult readers, I, I see that I'm, I'm using it with the, the things that we're um, borrowing are book like book three in a series book four in a series that I don't have the space or the money to keep going in every book in this in with all the series that there are so that's super helpful but I, I'm happy that, that we've been able to loan too because I think in the past I've been nervous about agreeing to loan because it, in the same way that that one participating library understands right I don't know like we don't have that much stuff and I, I don't want to be sending it everywhere but um but the things that that we that we've been able to loan were ones that I were I was very happy to to share. Um, I also want to thank our um, community partner, Public Library, for helping us be part of this because we don't have regular regular rails delivery in our library. So it's nice that the local public helps us out. And I'm super glad to hear you still say that about the uh, non non returnables. I I can guarantee that more high school libraries will will happily join Find More Illinois if if that service could help us provide some of the high level. Um, uh, journal articles that our teachers and our um, upper level students need. So please keep going with that. <laughs> Will do. Yes. And I just wanted to share that I went to the SWAN board meeting this morning and um, I've been talking to Aaron Skog about um, SWAN and the possibility of looking at Find More Illinois and he had shared with me an evaluation they had done about Find More in early 2021. And so I asked if they would redo that study now that there are so many more libraries in Find More. And SWAN is going to have its first Find More member because Addison, who is a Find More member, is joining SWAN. So it is the perfect time for SWAN to be looking into Find More Illinois. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, the Helen Plum Library where I work, we are a standalone library, Very, uh, our staff and patrons are enthusiastic, find more users, um, and we've, we've been very happy with it. It's, I'm glad to uh, hear that. It's made life a lot easier for our uh, interlibrary loan staff as well. Good to know. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Barb, can yes. you comment for a second on the level of in interest you're seeing from school libraries in general? Because from an academic perspective, I'm really interested in what this potential is for building connections within our districts from from public community like from a public college standpoint and i but like i could invest but for it to really work they also have to invest so i'm kind of curious what you've seen so far um let's see we have like i said i believe there are eight school libraries now most of them are high school with the exception of anawan which is a k-12 mm -hmm. and they are having the elementary students borrow because we asked because a lot of the high school librarians are kind of, it goes through them. They're not having the students directly, which I understand because of SAP and all. I was a school librarian for many years. So I get all the things you have to factor in. Um, we have had some interest from 
a K-8 district, but it's kind of there, she was coming up to the end of their fiscal. And so we probably will do more. It's not a done deal. It's just a, she's like, okay, I need to pause because I'm going to be gone for the summer, et cetera. And we will be talking again later in August. Now that would be K-8. She was more interested in the middle school. We've had, it's been mainly high schools that have been reaching out. Now I did have a large academic library, one of the state universities reached out because they're in a region where they said they know they have a lot of standalones and a lot of high school libraries that are very small. And so they have been talking to Ann Slaughter about that possibility of joining. And then they're, like they said, they don't even, even if they came in as a uh, lender only, they said, we're happy to share our resources, especially in our surrounding area, knowing that they have need for that. I'm not sure if I'm truly answering your question. No, though. you're providing a lot of helpful context. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking, it's my last meeting, so I'm <laughs> being philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about like a lot of our equity goals and, and particularly about the funding deficit we see with school libraries and the the more immediate way to resolve an issue around access to resources is not always about more funding, but more sharing, right? So when I think about where we could potentially target some resources to supplement inclusion, I, I think looking at school libraries and getting them connected through resource sharing in this way might be an incredibly effective way for us to think about equity goals, school libraries, and bolstering a new and effective system that's kind of at the centerpiece of what your kind of the future of resource sharing in rails in many ways right so i don't know it could be kind of interesting to kind of merge all those goals together and to, and think about what that looks like so it's on my, it's on my mind <laughs> but it takes it takes reciprocity right like like i could make a, a case for my college library investing in this system i mean i kind of kind of i'm not sure there's a lot of a lot of benefit for my library for my users to engage in find more illinois there might be, but I need to investigate that more. I think it's more as a net lender. We're always a net lender in any system we're in usually. So like, but is this, a, this is a, a channel that we're not currently engaging with unless somebody, you know, literally drops a, an ALA, ILL form in the mail to us. They're probably not, you know, or, or they're in OCLC, which they're probably not in many cases. Yeah, so it's just, smaller ones, no. I, I don't know. I, I, I think it'd be wonderful for us to be able to support more of our community through easy means. But it, like I said, we have to make sure there's enough people in the pool who are looking for each other, right? So anyway, you're, you're doing all this great stuff. But I'd <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll just add in that in my, um, in my high school library realm, we, we have um, a, a very strong connection between high school libraries um, on a, a listserv, which we just transitioned over to a Rails <laughs> listserv. And, and multiple times every day my high school colleagues are saying i need access to this journal article who has it and and so all of us are chugging through all the databases we have but we kind of have all the same database so it falls to somebody whose kids in college and you borrowed their login or somebody who's taking a grad school class and can get you know it's like we're see them. I know. <laughs> and, and so we so do do we need a legitimate way to get the articles that our that our patrons need a hundred percent we really do um and and if if there are if there are um academic libraries who are willing to share that it would it would it would fall on grateful grateful shoulders well thank you thank you we'll get out of here so monica can have her space back <laughs> all right uh next we go to the state library and we're glad to well welcome Megan Harmon uh, with the State Libraries Library Development Group. Thanks very much for welcoming me. You guys were, were so um, welcoming to the new kid on the block and I, I really appreciate it. Um, I've been a librarian for 10 years. I started at um, the Brookings Library at University of Illinois Springfield. I later went to the Chatham Area Public Library. And then most recently I was at the Abraham Lincoln uh, Presidential Library as their reference librarian. So accidentally I wound up working at an academic, a special and a public. So I got that experience and I can't believe I'm at the State Library now. Um, one of the first things that they had me sit down and do on my first 
Mother's Day. I just started this year, so super, super new. Um, was going through the, um, the ARPA grant summaries to submit to IMLS. Um, and I thought, my gosh, I have absolutely arrived because I got to read all about the wonderful things that libraries were doing during such a challenging time. And uh, I'm, I'm just really thrilled to be here. Um, as far as the report from the State Library goes, I'll absolutely echo Ms. Harris's statements about um, how thrilled we were about uh, House Bill 2789 passing. And I think the only thing that I would add um, is that uh, the next step in that is drafting the administrative rules. And there will be an open period when that is open for comment. Um, and the timeline is um, we expect that those rules will be in place by January 1st of 2024. Um, the other piece of legislation we've been watching closely ties hand in hand with that $5 million for e-resources, and that is Senate Bill 2419, which is also known as the License to Read. And what that bill does is it gives the Secretary of State authority to negotiate for e-books and audiobooks on the behalf of users statewide. Um, it provides enabling legislation, which brings the General Counsel and procurement to the table for the benefit of libraries. Um, that has been sent to the governor. We are waiting for him to sign it. So I think when you last met, it, it was on maybe its third reading. So we are we are hopeful that that will be signed. Um, and of course, this bill is not intended to duplicate efforts. Um, uh, the state library will be working with Carly, with IHLS, and with Rails on this effort. As far as what's going on in the library development group right now, it's an exciting time for me to join with all of this going on with legislation. And also we are heavily in the process of reading through grant applications to submit them forward um, with our recommendations for Secretary Genulius. Um, those grants include the three system area grants and per capita grants. Um, the Family Volunteer Workplace Adult Literacy Grants to Enhance Reading, Writing, Math, or English profic Proficiency for Program Participants. I got to read on those and I really enjoyed reading them. Um, the Radio Information Services Grants, which provide blind and phys physically handicapped services. The Illinois Library Delivery Services Grant. The Project Next Generation Grants, which engage tweens and teens in library-based programs and projects submitted to the regional library systems for programmatic support, which for you would include L2 and um, the World Cataloging Services. So we've just been busy reading those and submitting them forward with our recommendations. And um, I once again, thank you for, for letting me talk to you today. Thank you. Uh, next, we are on to new business. And before we go to Alice with a report from the nominating committee, did want to acknowledge one of our incoming trustees, uh, Jenna Vanek, who's here. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> and uh, was Jean able to make it? I think she is. Uh, okay. I've not heard from her. Yeah. Okay. Catherine Yanikowski is also attending as an attendee, not, oh. not as a panelist. Welcome. We're looking forward to working with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and next we have um, Alice with a report on the board election and recommendation for slate of officers. Thank you. Uh, first, um, you know, I have to say that we had a like a record turnout for voting in the, the election this year. So thank you to all the members who voted and thank you to everyone who helped get the word out. Uh, that was really nice to, to see um, that increase in voting than what we've had in past years. So for the election results uh, for the academic library seat, uh, Gwen Gregory from Northern Illinois University was elected. Uh, for our public library trustee seats, we have Alex Vancina was reelected uh, to a second term, uh, Jean Carroll from the Thomas Ford Memorial Library and Jennifer Hovannik uh, from the Villa Park Public Library. Uh, for our school library seat, uh, Monica Caldecott was reelected to a second term. And for our special library seat, uh, Catherine Yanikowski, the corporate librarian at engineering systems, was elected for that seat. So uh, congrats to, to everyone who was elected. Uh, the nominating committee is also pleased to recommend the following slate of officers for the uh, fiscal year 24. And that is Alex Vancina for president. 
because of course we're losing our, our vice president. <laughs> <laughs> I told you when you helped me. So I can't say I didn't see this coming. But, um, because we have uh, no one to sort of move into that role, we did ask Alex, and fortunately he agreed to this thing on his president's role. So thank you, Alex. Um, Gwen Gregory has agreed to serve as vice president. She was actually serving in the vice president role when she had previously been on the rails board and then had to resign due to a job uh, change. And so we're very happy um, that she's going to be able to step into that role again. Uh, Julie Milovec has agreed to be our secretary, and Karen Wojtek uh, has been nominated for treasurer for the uh, fiscal year 24. I just want to extend my thanks to you, Alice, and chairing the nominating committee, and to Renee for being on the nominating committee, as well as the rest of the committee. It's a lot of work over a short period of time, um, and all the pieces have to kind of fall in place and then and make that work happen. So thank you for everything that you put into it and for making it such a, a smoothly running process. Yeah, it, was, it went really smoothly this year. <laughs> so, thank you to everybody who said yes. <laughs> thank you all, and it's, it's great that we had such a good turnout this year. It's also nice that we went over the 200 mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, were there any other questions uh, regarding the um, election results or for the committee? If not, then and next. Just, excuse me, just to note that the site will be voted on at the July meeting. Yes. Um, yes. After the new board members are, are on. Just one in. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Up next, we have the organizational chart and compensation structure for fiscal year 2024. Monica. Thank you, Alex. So as we discussed last month in our budget and operational plan discussion, um, we're bringing to you this month the new updated pay grade assignments for next fiscal year, as well as the updates to the organizational chart that have taken place since the last time uh, you approved this chart. Um, there is a memo that describes those changes, um, including three individual changes uh, that we highlighted here. Um, one was uh, due to a extensive analysis of the job description of one of our administrative assistance roles. Uh, the position was changed uh, in title to a special projects coordinator and was reclassed uh, from pay grade four to pay grade six. Um, as we discussed in our budgetary discussion, we also, uh, have the addition of a human resources assistant um, and that assistant will support the organization because of all the changes that have happened in human resources especially over the last few years um, changes related to labor turnover policy development support related uh, to our union staff and then also uh, best practices it relates to equity diversity and inclusion um, in addition, our delivery driver sorter and floater positions were moved from pay grade one to pay grade two um, as recommended by HR source because of the starting salary and where it falls in the pay grade. So those are the three major changes. Um, and then you have a list of the new hires uh, that you have seen added to the organizational chart. So any questions about either the organizational chart or the pay grade as you see it here? All right, if there are no questions, then may have a motion and a second for approval of the fiscal year 2024 organizational chart and compensation structure. So moved, Vanessa Burrell. Vanessa? Second. Diane, thank you. Sorry, who was first? Uh, Vanessa and Diane. Uh, all in favor? Please, we need a roll call. We do. Thank you, Emily. Rosie Camargo. Yes. Alice Creason. Yes. Robin Helmethal. Yes. Diane Hollister. Renee Leva. Yes. Jennifer McIntosh. Yes. Julie Milovic. Yes. Thomas Stagg. Yes. Beth Pepin. Yes. Vanessa Villarreal. Yes. Monica Caldicott. Yes. And Alex Mancina. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have a new member application. Uh, Dan? Step out of shadows. <laughs> uh, so we have two uh, new member requests today. Uh, they're both schools. The first one is District 50. 
District 50 is a two school district in Washington, Illinois. Uh, Tanya Prater is a school librarian there. She was part time uh, this past school year, but she's going to be full time in 2023 2024. She would have uh, she would have qualified for uh, there. The district would have qualified because she is more than 15 hours per week. But it's nice to see that they're making a bigger investment in her and the library. They're actually going to be renovating her library this summer, which is exciting. Um, she's interested in uh, res membership for the school district library grant, which they would qualify for um, in October, and possibly joining eRead um, and just giving student access to more materials. The other one that you have is a private school in Glenview, Illinois. It's St. Catherine Labore, and this, they're part of the Archdiocese of Chicago. The librarian, uh, Ms. McPherson, has been there five years. Uh, she actually got the library started on some free software called uh, Libib, which I hadn't heard of before, but um, it's a nice way to automate. Um, she's very proud of that, as I think she should be, um, and she's really worked up to, to build her school's library, um, and I think Rails membership would be really helpful and possibly giving her access to things like grants, um, continuing education, deals and discounts. So can I answer any questions, buddy, that you want? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If there are no questions, may I have a motion and a second for approval of the membership applications of St. Catherine School in Glenview and District 50 schools in Washington, Illinois, and request final approval from the Illinois State Library. Oh. Rosie, thank you. Monica. And Monica, thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have the draft board meeting schedule for fiscal year 2024. It's discussion only and will be voted on next month. Thank you, Alex. So in your packet, you see a draft schedule um, for all the board meetings of fiscal year 2024. Um, it includes, again, these are typically the fourth Friday of the month at 1 p.m. Um, there are some exceptions to that, which are listed uh, in your calendar. And then there's also a list of potential um, conflicts in terms of the conferences that happen in the area. So you can see that there shouldn't be conflicts uh, in terms of the board meeting schedule. Um, any questions at all or comments about the board meeting schedule as presented? And as Alex mentioned, this is just for discussion for today. Uh, this will be voted on by the newly seated board in July. Thank you, Monica. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have uh, Dan again with uh, board development topic, and this month is uh, my library is campaign progress report. Is it okay if I do it from here? Sure. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, um, hello again. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the My Library Is campaign, which is something that the communications team under Mary Witt uh, has been working on for about five years now. It's been a big part of what we do and a big part of how we reach uh, both our member libraries and then people outside of uh, our member libraries as well. So uh, just, you know, before I kind of get into the nitty gritty of the campaign, I want to kind of re uh, revisit the purpose and origins of the campaign. Um, so in 2018, we did a strategic plan revision. Um, and Rails heard extensively from libraries that they needed help um, promoting the library's value and telling the library story more effectively. Uh, so uh, this campaign was really designed specifically around those goals. Uh, we launched, we really launched the campaign in 2019. And the first thing that we did was we did a survey of our members and we really heard them say that they wanted concrete tools um, like talking points, marketing plans, videos, things that would help them turn around and make the case to their um, patrons and stakeholders. So, uh, so one of the first things that we did was uh, we released uh, two videos and uh, they were released probably about um, within a year of each other. Uh, the first one was the Dreams Take Flight video, which is actually filmed at the Gail Borden Public Library. If you, if you haven't seen it, it's a beautiful, beautiful video. Um, and then in 2020, uh, a little about a year after that, we launched the Elders of the Internet video starring um, Nick Offerman, 
Uh, and, and that was a fantastic uh, video as well. Very different vibe, those two videos. <laughs> But, um, but a really, really great resources. And, you know, generic enough where any library could take that, promote it in their social media, in their newsletters, um, online, and, and kind of reach patrons that way. Uh, we worked with a marketing company called Imagination. Um, they were fantastic to work with, and they were great partners for us. Um, the Elders of the Internet video, I should mention, we did launch that on Valentine's Day 2020. That was right. <laughs> <laughs> like a month before the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> pandemic was going on during that time. And it was a little bit of a, of a, of a downer, killed the momentum of the video a little, unfortunately. So, um, but these videos are still available for you. And if you ever want to use them, please do. Um, in 2020, we also released a talking points document, a talking points documents. And we have four, uh, four different versions, one for schools, one for academics, one for publics, one for specials. Um, and they're really all focused on gaining and cementing support for libraries. These are really, again, these are generic enough that any library could use them, give them to board members, give them to parents, teachers, um, you know, superintendents, uh, administrators, all those types of things. Um, so, you know, we were, um, I think we were really gaining some momentum with that. Um, and, and around that same time, we had a grant program called the Partnership Grant, which we decided to rebrand as the My Library Is Grant Program. The first year of the, the grants, um, those were for all four types. And then we kind of realized that the, some of the biggest need out there was for school libraries. So we actually, after that first year of the grant program, we made them only for school libraries. Uh, over the past two years, we've given out more than $1,300,000 $1, in grant funds um, to over 40 school libraries. Sorry, I'm pretty sugared up right now. Um, during this time, we've uh, we've also been featuring a lot of uh, webinars that were developed um, kind of under that same My Library is heading. Uh, and that's uh, thank you, thanks to the CE team, which has really done a great job of finding presenters for us. Um, almost everything that you see here is linked on the My Library is website, mylibraryis.org. And we also link to a lot of great outside resources. You know, we know that we don't exist in a vacuum. So we've uh, linked to things like ILA, ALA, um, SLA, other places that have um, kind of advocacy campaigns like this. Um, sharing Showcase. Sharing Showcase is one of my favorite parts of the My Library Is website. Um, and if you've seen it, you've seen that there's a ton of resources on there. Um, so this is the section where libraries can download and upload things like videos, press releases. Um, we have so many great examples in there, and I'm just going to point to one, and I mentioned this in the advocacy committee meeting as well. Um, Gerber Hart, which is uh, a Rails member, they're, they're an LGBTQ library, uh, library and archives. They created kind of just an advocacy video about, the, about their library and about why it was important, uh, why the work they did was important. It's really, really fun to watch. Um, it's very high quality. Um, we uploaded it there for them, and it's uh, you know, available for anyone to download or copy. Um, we've also got full marketing plans, style guides, examples of social media posts. So a lot of this comes from the Illinois Library community, which is great. Um, we also have stuff that comes from outside of the uh, Illinois Library community. So you're seeing that infographic there, what is the school librarian doing? And this is this type of advocacy piece where you could print that off. You could, you could download that, print that off, and hand that to your, your principal or your superintendent and say, this is what I do on a regular basis. There's no mystery behind what a school librarian does. This is exactly what I do. Um, so again, anyone can download these materials, but only um, Rails uh, libraries members with L2 accounts can actually post them. So it's something that all the libraries we, we create, um, we add things, but other people can use them. We also have a really dynamic blog, um, and, and again, I think the blog is, is just one of the one of the best parts of, of the of the website. Uh, we have over 200 blog posts. Um, it's definitely the most visited part of the My Libraries website. Um, and we share a lot of that content in the e-news, in our email lists, in our social media. So we're using that content to sort of, um, you know, really get, get our name out there and get people's names out there. Um, if you go there right now, we have a ton of, uh, we have a ton of articles from our grant recipients. We required all of them to write, uh, to write blog posts, kind of talking about the outcomes of their projects. Um, and we we get frequent contributions from people in libraries who just see the blog, see the My Libraries website, and say, "Hey, I want to contribute. What, how can I do so?" So uh, we always run blurbs in the Rails E News, soliciting those types of things. So if you have examples from your libraries, send them to us. We'd be happy to work them into our um, 
into our schedule. Um, and then all of the blog articles that go in there, um, we work with ILA and actually we have a great partnership where um, ILA sort of takes those stories, takes those projects uh, examples and uses them to share with legislators during the legislative season so that we are repurposing this material in a way that's really appropriate for, for, for those legislators to kind of find out what are libraries doing, what are, what are, how are they impacting their communities. <laughs> Um, we do mediate the posts that come into that blog. Uh, so, so, you know, when they come in the submission page, we do schedule them so that they're not coming, you know, all at the same time. Um, and that's also to prevent sort of anything that's poorly formatted or comes in as, as kind of trash. Um, other resources that I'm going to mention. Um, so uh, about, you know, about two years ago, we came up with the idea of having an advisory team for this campaign. Um, and we recruited 12 people uh, from all different types of libraries. Um, the primary purpose was just to help the camp help keep the campaign fresh, come up with new ideas. But those folks were also uh, responsible for writing regular blog posts, and I'm happy to report that they continue to do so um, on a regular basis. Um, and uh, part of their job is also to come up with things like events. We did some online roundtable events um, that were around marketing and advocacy topics. Uh, that was about a year ago. Um, they've helped us brainstorm a lot of new directions, which has been great. Um, the group has dropped off a little bit in terms of participation. Um, we ended up kind of taking a break in terms of just meetings because um, we, we weren't seeing a lot of engagement from them. But uh, the, the blog posts have been really great, and I'm so happy to, to have people engage in the campaign like that. Um, we also did some a, a bunch of video series. That first one, the My Libraries Conversations, um, we talked to people who were doing cool things, who were doing advocacy campaigns in their own libraries, um, who were finding ways to kind of market their libraries to, uh, to other folks. Um, and then the Specialized Library Spotlight, which is all about special libraries, because we felt that you know, there was kind of some mystery behind what specialized libraries do, and we want to bring that out um, and give them a chance to tell us what they do. Um, and then lastly, just we had some some conference presentations. We were taking this sort of statewide and, and trying to get people engaged that way. So um, that has tailed off a little bit since the, since the pandemic, but that's just because we feel people know more about the campaign at this point. <clears throat> How you can help. So as board members, uh, we ask that you all be advocates for both Rails and the My Libraries campaign. Um, you know, so writing something is really easily easy and you know, recruiting people in your libraries would be really helpful to us to write a blog post. Um, ask them to add resources in their share and showcase. If you see some type of collateral, a marketing plan or a video that you have in your own library, ask them to add it. That would be really helpful to us. Um, you know, share those videos. Those videos are such good uh, resources for everyone. Um, and then lastly, you know, just those talking points documents, I think are really, really nice. So that's the end of my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions about the campaign. All right, thank you, Dan. Now we are on to uh, Rails board member reports. Does anyone have any news to share from their library? Well, also, if you get uh, to ALA on Sunday, I will be speaking at the Godert. They are doing a Beyond the Vote advocacy for uh, libraries. And it features a bunch of us who were in the Chicago Tribune's Chicago of the Year for Books article uh, last December. Um, so we are one o'clock. Uh, so on Sunday afternoon, weird time slot, I know. <laughs> but if you happen to be there, come and see us. Could be fun. It's wonderful. I'm also presenting at ALA with Literacy Nation Inc. We're doing a panelist discussion with um, uh, Literacy Nation with their authors, and I'm one of the librarian um, specialists on the panelists, and I'm helping them with the readathon on Saturday. So it's, it was a lot more than I was expecting, but I'm pretty excited. It's going to be fun. <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie. Um, and also at Lake Villa Library, I just had to show it off. This is our summer reading. They found a, I don't I don't remember what the software was called. I forgot to ask them, but they actually barcode our summer reading stuff. Um, and this is what it looks like. It is like a cute little we're doing a candy a sweet summer this summer oh, that's great. and I can pass it around so you guys can see but it's like a it's like a little board game so it's like really cute um so I had to share that that's pretty much what's um going on at Lake Villa right now summer reading's been pretty and pretty crazy <laughs> and that's not how does the barcode help you um they have been um barcoding it to help see how many of the patrons are doing it okay. and then to help them mark um 
So like every 10 days you get like a little prize or something. So it helps them keep track of who's coming in to finish. Okay. So it's like a little easier, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. and they've, they've been doing that for, the barcoding is new, but I do remember them starting it a little bit last year somehow. So yeah, it's so cute. There's like giant candy stuff everywhere. If you ever get a chance to come up to her Lake Villa, definitely take it, definitely come look. Cause they put like, even on our social media, you'll see it. They made like Candyland all over the library. And like there's in every section of library, there's like a Candyland area. So it's like really, really fun. Thank you. I always felt like I wanted to live in Candyland. Right? Yeah, so I'm coming out. It's really fun over there right now. And we do giant baskets for the kids for summer reading. So the downstairs is filled with tables of the basket so the kids can get really pumped to finish their summer reading. So it's a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I will be going to AOA on Sunday. Uh -huh. And I'm going to stop by the Rails booth because I heard they give out good pens. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> what um, I wanted to say was this past week, I just wanted to ask all of you, this past week we received this um, ordinary email, which I found disturbing and offensive. Um, it concerns uh, Gay Pride Month and called me crazy, sheltered, old, whatever. But it took me several days to find the words to even say to Jeannie, you know, thank you for sharing this with us. How do we mentally prepare ourselves to people who present objections to Pride Month? Mm -hmm. Have you received anything about attacking Pride Month? Denials, we did. There's notes being slipped inside oh. books, mm -hmm. like in the kids area and the teen area. Um, just negative messages, you know, and so that's worrisome. Um, thankfully, at South Holland, we have a big old display, but none of our books are gone. <laughs> the mermaid books are gone, but um, but yeah, we haven't had that. But at Niles, we so when I was the active librarian, um, I received requests for reconsideration from the juvies portion of our library. Mm -hmm. But I've never experienced anything like this. The preaching, the morality, statistics on sexually transmitted diseases. I mean, it was just awful. And I asked Jeannie about, you know, what are we to do as trustees, members of rails, just citizens? What do we, how do we mentally prepare? What do we come back with? And the thing that we, you know, talked about was our mission statement. And I just wanted to know has, if no one is, has anyone else had this in the past or this past week? Well, I've because read it, it did not emanate from blooming to normal. It emanated from Downers Grove, from an organization. And I just wanted to- Let me guess, Awake, was, Illinois. What? Let me guess, Awake, Illinois. I don't was know. That it was the anti-homosexuality organization. It was the leader of it. Um, that's all I was privy yeah. to. Um, but I just wondered if this has been the trend. And if statistically, do you think that we will be getting more requests for reconsideration or um, any other requests? It's possible. Well, I think it's a pretty vocal but small minority as uh, as Julie mentioned there are yeah. a couple of organizations that are quite organized and have been um, trying to get behind some of these book challenges but it's uh, a pretty vocal minority okay because we had one incident last year where and it was just the placement of books it was a controversial book that was too close to the children's section and we had the news media I mean it was it was gangbusters. I mean, it was crazy. We had some people with boom boxes playing music. We had the cops there. I mean, it was just, I was just, I was stunned. So I just wondered if it's, if, so we don't really need to prepare ourselves for an onslaught of well, I mean, I think based on what we have seen uh, across Illinois and certainly in the Rails member library area, a lot of libraries are facing challenges and increased challenges, particularly around books and materials around LBGTQ okay. materials. Um, it's always a good idea for trustees to familiarize themselves both with 
you know, things like your mission statement for your library, the ALA, you know, materials around freedom to read, um, just so that people are feeling prepared. So if it does happen in your community that you know what your collection development policies look like, what your reconsideration policies look like, and you understand the processes that these kinds of things go through. Um, but to, to Alex's point, I think there has been some really interesting research going around this year um, that is showing that the kinds of uh, objections that are coming compared to previous years, more and more objections are coming from one person or a few people, as opposed to people coming with an individual objection to material. They're coming with many, many objections. And these are often organized efforts that are coming from other types of organizations that are organizing the way that they're approaching this. So it is always a good idea to be prepared as a, as a board to make sure that you know where uh, or how you would respond to this kind of uh, a response. I know that at NILF, we always, whenever we get objections to like the picture books, picture books <laughs> that we get, we always say like, we make sure that all our children can see themselves in the books. So we can't just show white kids with a mom and a dad on every cover, it would not reflect our community. So we always say, we make sure that all our books are displaying our children in the community. Well, I've had people complain about my first week, the giver wanted me to take it off the shelf. I had to follow through on it. And I had just read it and I'm like, what is objectionable? It was the release. So, I mean, but anyway, thank you very much for your help. So just call me old, like I say, I was just stunned. Thank you for sharing that, Diane. It's not my library, but I went to Gil Borden because they have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle summer reading and they have this amazing exhibit. <laughs> and I told my daughter it was the first day of summer. We're like going to Gil Borden <laughs> to see this amazing um, exhibit. So definitely go, if you're like a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. There's so much to do. Um, the staff is so helpful. Um, they have some really great programs to coincide with it. Um, but yeah, that was a fun um, excursion. And we found a Doctor Who cafe um, in the area. It's like walking distance from the library. So if you want to nerd out, definitely go to Elton. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It got me excited for our kickoff. Our kickoff for South Holland started. Kickoff for Niles Main District Library started. So um, it was great seeing my Facebook page fill up with library photos of their kickoffs and their parties and stuff. So for me, it's like Christmas. <laughs> oh, I did want to mention Oak Park. Um, there was a we had a BIPOC meeting yesterday and Oak Park had some awesome stuff going on. They said that they got a grant for hip, uh, the 50 years of hip hop and they ended up getting a grant from New York libraries and they ended up getting like a hip hop bus coming to their library to like really represent it. Yeah, we all would not stop talking about this hip hop bus for like, I think like <laughs> half an hour with her. It was a lot of fun, but she sent me a lot of really cool information about what they ended up being able to do with their patrons for hip hop. Um, it was pretty cool. Uh, they did like some t-shirt designs too. And whoever won the t-shirt design, they made a bunch for some of the community also and stuff. So I was like, that is, is so neat. Is it neat. coming or did it come? Oh, uh, everybody came over there, but uh, definitely poke their brain some more because I knew the info they sent me too. But it was really cool. I was like, do you mind if I share this at tomorrow's Rails meeting? Because that's pretty fun. Never heard of a hip hop bus. And I now I want the hip hop bus. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was cool. If you do celebrate pride or have an interest in LGBTQ plus history, the Downers Grove Library is hosting the Legacy Wall during the month of June. This is the uh, traveling exhibit by the Legacy Project. If you've been to the Legacy Walk in downtown Chicago, that is an art and history installation. Um, this is their traveling exhibit. It features over 140 uh, short biographies of people from the LGBTQ plus community who've contributed throughout history um, uh, in over 20 fields of study. And uh, it's a really great way to learn a little bit more about how LGBTQ plus people have been erased from history. Are there any other reports? If not, thank you. and. Next, we're on to our uh, 
meeting recap and agenda building for the next real board meeting. Uh, the next board meeting is set for Friday, July 28th at 1 p.m. The day will start with new board member orientation at 9.30 and all board members are invited to attend. Uh, the orientation will be followed by lunch at noon and our regular board meeting at 1 p.m. All right. Uh, and don't forget that we are taking photos that day. Yes. So I, I specifically wanted to ask about that, Monica. Do you know what time during that day, if, if, I, if I can't make the morning, is it going to be? That the photos are beginning sometime after the orientation, but before the one o'clock board yeah. meeting, okay. right? So okay. sometime. Like yeah. lunch, during lunch? Yes. Yeah, during lunch. So right. We'll, we'll, we'll probably shoot for like yeah. 12. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. No, my should be. I'll have to dress a little nicer well, we than I normally do. <laughs> I normally go t-shirt for these board meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Like All the right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other business before we adjourn? Yeah. If not, this meeting is adjourned at 2.15 p.m. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.